Hello friends, welcome at uh, slide of trypanosomiasis part 2. I am discussing on Dr. Vet Chana, Dr. P. R. Patel, of Head Veterinary Medicine. In trypanosomiasis part 2, we will see pathogenesis, clinical findings in various animals, necropsy findings. We see here the pathogenesis. There are various types of courses observed in clinical findings. The course of disease depends on many factors. Some of the factors are genetic constitution of the animal, previous exposure to the disease, that means immunological status of the animal, virulence of the infection, the strains of the parasite and species of the host. So, this so many factors are working to decide the course of disease. The infection into the host is by the fly during feeding. When the fly feed on infected animal, they carry the infection mechanically. In trips, multiply in blood and this trips dispersed throughout the cardiovascular system and soon these whole trips are distributed into the whole vascular system and there is parasitemia. Anemia is the main pathological change. There is extravascular destruction of RBC. It is not intravascular. This anemia is extravascular. Means the parasitized RBC are phagocytosed by macrophages, monocyte and RA system. They are phagocytosed in spleen, liver and lymph node. So here the jaundice is not the major symptom. The biochemical changes observed are increase in globulin and decrease in albumin. That is also the characteristic finding. Continuation of the pathogenesis we have seen the anemia is the main finding. Here we will see which are the factors that cause the anemia. Factor 1 Hemolysis of RBCs by trypanosomes directly. Second, they increase the erythrophagocytosis. There is opsonization. Opsonization means keep the RBC ready for phagocytos to eat. The third factor for the causing the anemia is hemodilution due to increased plasma production. This also leads to anemia. And other factors are decreased erythropoiesis, formation of RBC is reduced and intravascular coagulation is an important finding. A small coagulating materials are formed and they are lodged in various tissues, intravascular coagulation. On a long run or in acute cases, there is death. The reasons for death are progressive anemia. Sometimes anemia is very severe, sometimes a progressive. The progressive is more common. Intravascular coagulation and these coagulating materials, coagulating particles are distributed into the various tissues and they block the capillaries of that tissue causing necrosis or ischemia of the tissue. 
third important cause is hypoglycemia whenever there is tryptophanemiasis hypoglycemia occurs and that is due to two reasons one is hypoglycemia due to disturbed metabolism by endocrine glands especially adrenalis pancreas and thyroid glands another important cause of hypoglycemia is direct utilization of glucose by tryptophanes the tryptophanes multiply very fast by binary season and when they multiply fast they consume lot of glucose they require plenty of energy so glucose is utilized and that lead to hypoglycemia and that lead to hypoglycemic shock one of the reason for circling is hypoglycemia one of the reason other reason is this trips blocks the capillary of the brain and that is also one reason for circling the fourth reason of death is toxemia this trips produce endotoxin and that is liberated by lyd parasites so these are the causes of death and here we have seen the causes of anemia and this anemia and death they are the prominent symptoms in acute cases here first we will see clinical signs in equines equines are highly susceptible and large number of the cases are seen in equines again in equines there are many forms acute subacute and a chronic the incubation period is 4 to 9 days the symptoms in horses are severe donkeys are generally resistant in acute cases there is death within few days and then it will be chronic then there is death after few months depending on the virulence of strain of the organism the symptoms are intermittent fever there is a period of fever for few days again animal will become normal for few days again fever again normal like that intermittent fever anemia is the main symptom another important symptom is transient temporary local urticarial eruption a raised edematous plaque or will like structure is called urticarial eruption just like a bite of mosquito and these are found on sensitive area of neck and flanks continuation of clinical findings in equines edema of the legs and lower part of the body is also one of the important symptom hemorrhage is found at the junction of mucocutaneous where this mucus and cutaneous skin mucous membrane skin junction generally at the nostril eyes and anus petechial hemorrhage on mucous membrane of the eye that is because of the high fever and toxemia pale and dirty yellowish mucous membrane paleness suggests anemia the yellowish color suggests the ictus or jaundice there is staggering gait and paraplegia because there is affect on the central nervous system labored breathing because of anemia there is diarrhea and or constipation the urine contained albumin blood and is dark yellowish in color 
there is atrophy of the muscles of the hind quarter edema of the dependent parts or legs emaciation and paralysis in horse these are characteristics so such condition is called as maldi cadras in other language of the country maldi cadras is another singular in horse fever emaciation and edema are common signs signs in cattle and buffaloes the course varies by various factors and the course is from a symptomless carrier to per acute infection is also observed in per acute cases there is nervous form of convulsion and circling death in 2 to 3 hours sometime without premonitory symptom in acute cases animal become dull there is staggering gait fever circling movement characteristic nervous excitement is also characteristic due to excitement there is beating of head against wall and manger animal become apparently blind animal strike the feet on the ground stamping of the feet because of excitation continuous bellowing there is groaning or grunting twitchy of muscle coma and death within 6 to 12 hours in acute cases in subacute and chronic cases generally the level of parasitemia is less edema of the legs important symptom diarrhea intermittent fever is important symptom dullness progressive emaciation and death some of the common clinical findings in cattle and buffalo are enlargement of superficial lymph nodes emaciation progressive weakness and anemia dogs are also commonly affected incubation period 5 to 6 days the acute cases are fatal the symptoms are more severe in pups and imported dogs the symptoms are fever anorexia edema of head and throat coronary opacity is mostly found or blindness there is a laryngeal edema and that results change of voice similar to rabies in rabies there is change of voice we call it as a howling so similar is also observed here muscular spasm of the limb excitement biting the canal bars again the symptoms are very similar to rabies so nervous form is difficult to differentiate from trypanosomes and rabies the symptoms are almost the same now symptoms in camel in camel it is called as tai barsa or a tin barsa generally cattle a chronic form is found characteristic symptoms are intermittent fever progressive anemia edema of legs and emaciation especially hind parts in sheep and goat 
the cases are very rare the symptoms are moderate emaciation and anemia is the constant observation some of the characteristic necropsy findings are mentioned here the carcass is marked anemic carcass is emaciated and as harka means accumulation of fluid or edema type whole body petechial hemorrhage because of the toxemia and petechial hemorrhage generally at the junction of skin and mucous membrane there is a splenomegaly and hepatomegaly that is because of phagocytosis fat stores are depleted around the heart and there may be a corneal opacity friends it is my humble request to share this information to veterinarians requested to subscribe the channel next time we'll come with trypanosomiasis part 3 thank you very much for observing this video